All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Austin, Texas by Amos Schwarzfarb. How are you doing, Amos? Good, how are you doing today? It's good to be I'm here. Doing, yeah, I'm doing great. And we're gonna talk about your new book that I think, let me just get the correct date. It was just released last month, I think, am I correct? Yeah, on April 20th. April 20th. And the book's called Levers, the Framework for Building Repeatability into Your Business. Um, so let's get straight into it, Amos. Um, what's, the, what's the background to this book? Like, what's the genesis of it? The, 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 there's probably three different ways I can start the, start this. I mean, it really culminated early on in my career in, in building businesses. And, you know, I think at the time, a lot of these things were not as obvious as, as looking back. But when I took over the role at Techstar six years ago, I, and I was thinking, okay, what, what, how do I think I can have an impact on the companies I'm going to work with? Um, and just, you know, and looked back at the, the, companies that had been successful that I was a part of previously, there was a common thread through that. And so I used that as a, as a basis for working uh, with the companies that I work with at Techstars. And the real, the genesis, genesis for the book is a little different than that. But, um, get, you know, through my work at Techstars, I, I met my co-authors and, um, you know, I had the idea to say, hey, you know, and, and the co-authors that I met are the people that I would bring in as experts in certain fields where that I knew it was important. And I, you know, as, as, as most good leaders should do, find someone better than you to actually run the thing or deliver the thing. And, and so I found those experts. And um, I, I was talking to one of my co-authors, Trevor, one day, and, and you know, we were just talking about this sort of the state of building businesses and venture capital and how it, it kind of you know, frankly sucks that there isn't more access to um, fundamental education on business building. There's lots of it, lots of theory on how to do lean product development, lots of theory mm -hmm. on how to, or philosophy on how to raise capital, but very, very little on how to just go and build a business. And so we said, you know, we, and we were doing it. So we said, hey, why don't we take what we're doing and put it in written form so we can impact as many people as possible? No, it's great because uh, absolutely you're correct is that, uh, you know, especially with uh, a lot of startup companies or, or, or early stage companies and that is there's so much excitement around things and they're running around that the idea of building something repeatable and predictable is not always front and center. I think I think that's right, and I, I I think the word isn't even isn't used nearly enough. A lot of founders they'll you know they'll have they'll get us some you know a couple of sales you know maybe a handful of sales and say great it's time to scale. Mm -hmm. But there's a step before you can scale. You have to understand what you're scaling, which is where repeatability comes in. Learn how to be repeatable, and then once you know how to be repeatable, that's what you're actually scaling. Yeah, no, that's a great point because that is, and that tends to be the, it tends to be in the model, uh, you know, especially as you would know around, uh, you know, venture capital is that like a company gets some, you know, series A or seed financing or, or series B or whatever, and they pump it immediately. It's like hire a hundred salespeople, right? And that's it. And, and, and then, you know, 10, 10 may work out if you're lucky, but it's because, as you said, th there's no track to run on, right? It's just hire all of these people, bring them in, and and it'll it'll almost scale by itself, right? Which which almost never ever happens. And if it does, right. it's because you have repeatability and you just didn't know it. Right, 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 exactly. So, um, what are some of the what are some of the levers that uh, that business owners should be focusing in on? Because I I think there's they're not always clear to people. Um, that there are particular levers that you can focus on. Yeah, well, and so th th to be clear, what the what the book aims to do is to teach you how to find those levers. Because I think mm -hmm. the other the other thing that I believe is that even businesses that seemingly are similar on the outside really operate very differently on the inside. And so identifying what your what your levers of control on in any given business is very hard, as you just expressed. So the book takes the book takes you through five, five frameworks. And the goal of those frameworks is that over time, you will be on the direction to figure out what those levers are. And as you figure out which each one of those levers are, you're getting closer and closer to repeatability. You're getting repeatability in the different levers. And then when you have them all, you can say, okay, I'm going to crank them down and we're going to go full steam ahead. Um, and so in, in terms of the book, we walk you through this, this, these series of workshops that aim to, to help you figure that out around 
identifying who your customer really is, not just who you think you want them to be, what your business model really is and what truly drives your business model. What, do you, what should you really be prioritizing and why? And how do you really measure what you're doing, you know, not just you know, in the long run, but today to know that you're on the right path? Yeah. No, I, I agree. And I love, the, um, I love the idea, first of all, of, of the identifying your target customer, uh, because that is something that everybody sort of assumes that everybody does and they know how to do. And, uh, but oftentimes you'll find that that's, that's pretty vague or too broad or that they identify a customer type and treat every customer like it's that instead of saying, you know, maybe you have a couple of different segments of customers. Maybe you have a primary customer, a secondary or tertiary. But that whole that whole uh, exercise in really getting down into the nitty gritty of who your customer really is, I think is something that's often glossed over or done too quickly. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think, you know, optimistic founders with a ton of emotional conviction have an idea of what that customer, who that customer is. And, and oftentimes they're loosely correct. Sometimes they're not. Um, but that loosely correct, as you alluded to, is often very broad. And in the early days, broad will almost always kill you because there's so much nuance when you're really trying to figure out how do you get to repeatable sales, like knowing your custom, the, the, like the intimate details and attributes of every single customer are critical. And the, the, one of the things that we talk about in the book is you should be striving for a yes 100% of the time for all your first customers. You're 100% sure everything aligns who they are, where they went to school, their timing. And if, if those things are not, if they're saying no, because there's something, they're not your customer right now, right? Which is obvious, which is why they're not buying. But rather than say like, okay, I'm going to just like shoehorn my way in, say, well, okay, well, what are the attributes that get someone to say yes today? And let's get, let's figure out how to get that to repeatability. It doesn't have to be a huge set, but let's understand that intimately. And then we can start to expand to a much broader customer set over time because we understand the full attribute list and we can pick from that attribute list and how to expand in a real systematic way. Uh, and, and as you've worked with companies over the years, um, one of the things certainly in my experience is, is a real killer and that is assumptions, right? We, we make a lot of assumptions and we don't challenge them or we make assumptions based on incomplete data or gut feel or whatever. And oftentimes these can really undo us. So how do you, when you work uh, with, with clients, like how do you help them to challenge their own assumptions? Yeah, we, it's actually the third step in the framework. Is, so the, the first step is I did the, the, a framework uh, workshop around figuring the customer. The second is identifying all the drivers in your business model. And the third takes all of that and it, it forces you to identify all of the assumptions in your business. And you're gonna miss some, the, you know, the, the, the assumption in your business and we have a way to classify high priority versus low priority, validated versus unvalidated. And then if you're following the process, what we say is anything that's low priority, just ignore it. Even if you're doing it right now, stop doing it. If you're not, it's not low priority, so find out why, okay? If it's high priority and validated, this is the stuff that you're working on day to day on your business to grow it. And if it's unvalidated, this is the stuff you need to go test to see what you need to go do so that you can move it over to validated and actually start building. Yeah, no, I love, I love the, I love the, the way you've got a, a really good model around that because I think sometimes that's the hardest thing for, for not just you know, uh, growing businesses or whatever, but for businesses in general, it's just prioritization because you know we hate, we hate to not do anything, you know. So we try, we prioritize everything, and as you know, if everything's a priority, nothing's a priority. But that's always seems like a really difficult thing to do is let go of things, as you said. I mean, if things are low priority and you're not really doing it, to say just cut them out. It, that sometimes people like well well maybe not because maybe I you know should pay more attention to it I always think that that's a real challenge for people it, it, it for sure is and I it, you know I think one of the one of the things that I believe is look as a as a depending on your stage you only have so many resources yeah. and people can only do so much in a given time so so what do you really want to accomplish in what time frame and break it down to those those simple things and if you want to accomplish this particular thing and it's going to take a tremendous amount of resource like sure do you 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 can forego sleep you can forego but like some point you you're 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 actually sub optimizing everything you're doing because you're splitting your time and you know i don't care what anybody says it's 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 virtually impossible to split your time on more than you know two or three things and still be effective and that includes oh, yeah. your personal life and your family and anything else you might do 
Yeah, yeah. No, this uh, this whole idea of like, you know, multitasking and to be able to like, you know, split your focus in many, many different ways can it be done? Sure. But it really just means that you do, as you say, you do a lot of things kind of mediocre and and a lot of things pretty badly, too, because you just can't yeah. focus. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So another chapter that you have is key performance indicators, you know, KPIs and and obviously like everybody knows what KPIs are, or pretty much do, knows what KPIs are. And most businesses, if you ask them, they'd say, you know, what are your key performance indicators? They might be able to give you some, but how well thought out they were, how well tracked they are, how well, how, how well they're actioned on is very different. So how do you, what's your advice to people around KPIs? Yeah, so, you know, the way that we think about KPIs is baked right into the process. So, so firstly, there are, there are high level business KPIs that are important to understand. And, you know, we think about that as like your revenue formula of your business. Like, what do you think the math mm -hmm. is in your business, right? Those are typically lagging indicators of how your business is actually doing. Meaning once they're there, there's nothing you can do to change. It doesn't unlock anything new for you. So the way that we think about KPIs are specific to the things you're working on now. They should tie directly to something in your revenue formula, which is out of chapter two. Um, they should tie directly up and they, they sometimes change very, very often, right? They can be changing, you know, weekly or monthly, depending on what is the thing you're learning how to drive. Um, and the, the, the KPIs, our belief is they should always be leading indicators of something. So I do yeah. this thing, it unlocks something else, ultimately unlocking revenue. But mm -hmm. revenue is a lagging, you know, if, re if you look at revenue as a KPI, like once you have it, you're done. Like there isn't... <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of, it kind of, yeah, it, it kind of still amazes me the fact that a lot of people don't know the difference between leading and lagging indicators, and as you say, tend to focus a lot on lagging indicators. And yeah, lagging indicators are great, great data points, but they, you can't do anything about it. It's after the fact. It's the leading indicators that you can take action on. But people find it really often, in my experience, find it really difficult to understand or even create leading indicators. Yeah, and, and you know, look, it, it, it is, I've been doing this for a long time and, and I, you know, I have to stop and the, this is how we've positioned the framework. I stop and ask myself and say, okay, if we achieve this, what does it unlock? And it's that, the answer to that question that will tell you what is it, is it, it's a leading indicator of what? The thing it unlocks. And if you can't state that thing, it doesn't unlock anything. Yeah, no, is, I think I'm stating it very simple. It's still hard to get there, right? So I think the question you have to ask yourself if you're a listener and you're saying, okay, I'm trying to figure out my KPIs. If we do this thing, right? If I, if I make 35 calls, what does it unlock? 35 calls isn't the answer. The answer is the 35 calls we believe will unlock five demos. Yeah. And the answer is, does it? And if it doesn't, then dig in and understand why. If it does, then dig in and understand why and then move on to the next set of kpis and you already know now i mean if you make 35 calls to get five demos yeah yeah and, and i don't think it's a uh, simplistic at all i mean i think it's it's quite straightforward it's just i think it's a it's a lack of understanding of how these things work i think often and the fact that i think traditionally you know when people get into positions or start businesses they just think that those the, the lagging indicators are the important ones right and they don't understand the the leading mm -hmm. ones um, and, and another the, one of your your fifth one there is is financial modeling and I think that's a that's another incredibly interesting one because I do think that I wouldn't say people are financially illiterate but I mean I think I think certainly you know a lot of people but I think certainly even when people go into business they go in with maybe a, a, a superficial understanding of, of finance and, and financial modeling but I think the more important thing is that, they tend to be over optimistic, right? Um, in my experience, uh, most things take longer and cost more than you would like them to just generally as a rule of thumb. So if you if you model out your most optimistic scenarios and you get a little bit carried away, um, you're always going to be behind the eight ball. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the way that we think about the book is that the, the first four workshops are really the workbooks so that you have everything you need to build a financial model. And the, I think where people get tripped up on a financial model is, is a financial model should, should essentially turn into a crystal ball where you understand what the future will be if certain things happen. And when you 
your first iterations of it, it's a really cloudy ball. You can't see anything, but you understand how you believe the mechanics of your business will work, which is why it's really important. Even if you're an ideation stage of your business, yeah. build the financial model, all it is telling you is how you think the business is going to work and then use it and track against it and learn, oh, the business doesn't work how we thought it was gonna work. And, it, and here's how it's evolving. And over time, the, the, the cloudiness starts to go away to the point where you understand, you can look in, you can see the future because you understand your levers and you know, if I do these things, the output mm -hmm. will be this, barring some unexpected thing that will affect the model, which of course you didn't model for because it's unexpected. But if the expected happens, you understand what the outcome will be. Yeah, no, ab absolutely, and and also I think to to challenge yourself, like is is the is what you're modeling out is this absolute best case scenario where all the stars aligned and nothing goes wrong, uh, is that what you're modeling out, or are you modeling out something a little bit more realistic? Yeah. Uh, because like I said, I mean, I think sometimes, you know, when you, when you, when you go into something and you start something, I mean, you believe you're going to be successful. So you kind of like are already um, oriented towards being highly optimistic. And I think it's difficult sometimes for people to like scale it back a little bit and model yeah. back a little bit. So, um, yeah. because it's almost like they, they feel like, you know, we feel like, oh my God, am I admitting defeat or am I, am I prepared, you know, am I creating or visualizing the wrong thing right now? Yeah. And the answer is no, this building businesses is hard and, and, and no one has all the answers. Otherwise you would continually repeat building new businesses, you know, and so figure, figuring it out, it, you know, and, and all we're doing is saying like, hey, you're going to have to figure this out if you want to build a long term business. Here's a set of tools to go do that. Yeah, I love it. It's it's fantastic. And I would highly recommend people check out the book because I really think, you know, as you said, building a business is really tough and it's really hard and you need all the help you can get. And a book like this, I think, could could really, really help people, um, you know, by because you're giving them a framework. And I think that's what uh, sometimes when people start a business. I mean, I remember I was at a startup one time and um, and I was setting up the sales and marketing and everything. And I just remember one of the first days of coming into an empty office with a plastic table and a plastic chair and a Blackberry at the time and my laptop and staring at the wall and going, hmm, now what? <laughs> so I think anything that can help you have a framework to an attractor run on, I think is going to be incredibly, incredibly valuable to people. Hey, listen, Amos, this has been great. All of Amos's information is going to be below this uh, video, so you can, and the book as well, so you can check that out directly. Uh, but please do tell uh, people a little more about you and what you do before you go. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm, I'm a longtime operator turned managing director of Techstars six years ago. Uh, so I, I, I run the accelerator in Austin. I work with, you know, 10 or so companies a year, they come to Austin and, and uh, we, we do this, we work on their business with them and try to get them to some level of repeatability so that they can hopefully build something uh, long-term and sustainable. Absolutely. And the book again is Levers, the framework for building repeatability into your business available on Amazon and, and all the other um, places you can buy books. But as I said, I mean, I highly recommend if you're, if you're starting a business or you're early stage or you're struggling, um, check it out. Because uh, uh, having frameworks, I think, is, is incredibly, incredibly useful. All right, listen, thanks very much, Amos. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.